here every day so why not have fun with it and, and, and go with it as long as I can. Sadly we now know how long that was. Blair died last week at the age of 29. His family says the cause of death was pneumonia. The CDC says every year 112,000 deaths can be linked to obesity. When your spokesperson drops dead at the age of 29 and he's morbidly obese by anybody's estimation. Don't you have a problem? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? John Basso owns the Heart Attack Grill. As part of the act, he dresses up like a doctor. Every single person cared about Blair. Had he have been thinner, he most probably would have survived that pneumonia. And that's a hard fact that I'm not here to deny. There's an argument to be made that you used this guy during his life and that now you are very morbidly using his death to continue to promote your restaurant. I absolutely agree. And in a very sick way, his death has gotten the message out further. So this man's death has not given you pause at all? Zero pause. I hope that every single person out there comes in and buys a hamburger and a t-shirt from me. But you know what? I am saying loudly and as clearly as any business in America can, this is dangerous. Blair, you say, was also your friend in addition to working with you. I loved working with him. Do you have a conscience at all? My conscience is simply this. What would Blair hovering above me want me to do right now? And Blair would say this, put, put back on the stethoscope. Let's keep being the doctor that everyone loves to hate because that really gets the message out. To keep delivering that message, a week after Blair's untimely death, the Heart Attack Grill has another spokesmodel. Here you go. Hi. Ernie Hart. The fact that you stuffed him full of burgers for free as often as he wanted, mm -hmm. what share of the responsibility do you have for his death? The equal share with anybody who provided junk food for, to anybody. Aren't you glorifying obesity, which Ab obviously kills? Absolutely. I think it would be immoral to stop at this point. Explain that to me. We're past the point of no return at the Heart Attack Grill. We have blood on our hands at this point. Taste worth dying for. That's what we're focused on. We're not concerned with side implications, little trivial things such as whether or not you'll live long. We have a large sign right on the door that says, caution, this establishment's bad for your health. Everybody knows that. What we're here to do is to exercise our freedoms as American citizens. We should have the freedom to kill ourselves if we want to. And I should be allowed to provide that deadly diet to anybody who wants to take it. He depicts himself as Jesus Christ at the Last Supper, dining with the industry's other giants. You guys, we are actually rolling now. Actually rolling. Dr. John's Vegas location is double the size of his old place in Arizona. Hello. And his in-house fatality rate, it hasn't slowed a bit. How many people have actually had heart attacks in the room that we're sitting in? In the room that we're sitting in, we've had three heart attacks. And how many people have died? One. Now, I would like to say that the other two I did the grandest of favors for because they now uniquely and in a very real way understand their own genetic shortcomings. Now the one that I couldn't save was a very dear friend of mine. And I want to tell you something. They'll say it's grotesque. They'll yes, say how they will. how can you keep the man's cremation here? And I'll tell you something. I am setting the bag on the table. And I challenge any other restaurant to set the bag on the table. I'm talking about a bag of truth, about what's not going to happen if you don't listen to me. This will happen. This was a good man with hopes and dreams who couldn't control his eating habits. Inside this bag are the remains of yet another spokesman, John Ailman. He ate at the restaurant every day. But people are actually dying. So that's kind of where the, the gig has to stop. What do you say? People are dying. People will continue to die. Can they just stop, pause, and reflect upon the food for thought that I'm selling? It's not hamburgers, it's not t-shirts, it's not french fries. I'm selling you food for thought and a good laugh. Let's all have a good time, but let's really digest this. Let's think a bit, or we're gonna end up exactly like my friend in the bag. Ooh, Jasmine, can we have the cigarettes as well? 
a filter on a cigarette, it's like a condom during sex. <laughs> We're selling a legal but lethal commodity. And we're selling it and selling it and selling it. When there are lights and sirens outside and they're bringing some person out on a gurney, you're basically in the back room counting money at that point. Absolutely. Was that heart attack good for business? Did that heart attack pad my wallet with money? Absolutely. Did I enjoy that? Absolutely. I'm a businessman first and foremost. Let's be clear about something. I'm not peddling hamburgers to small children without parental guidance. These are adults purchasing a legal substance from me. I want one and only one thing. I want my message out there loud and clear. I am a believer that when people hear my message, the net health benefit to society is incredibly good. People wonder how I sleep at night, like a baby. Here's the thing. Our restaurant serves bad for you food. Other restaurants serve bad for you food. We're honest, they're not. Plain and simple, if everybody collectively got together and told the world all restaurant food is bad for you, then maybe we would save a few lives. Because I don't want to see people dead. Now, if they do die here, I'm not going to lie to you. That's great for business. I'll say it again. Death is great for business at the Heart Attack Grill. John Basso, who's the owner of the Heart Attack Grill, joins me now from Las Vegas. Uh, thanks, sir, for joining us. Your, your friend, John Allman, who I, I, I sense you were close to, I mean, he died. Uh, he had a heart attack. Uh, he was a spokesman for the restaurant. What, 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 how did you, I mean, did you feel at all responsible for that? I feel absolutely responsible. Anyone who were putting burgers in his mouth on a daily basis should feel responsible. Now, granted, we would warn him continuously. We'd say, hey, John, you know those burgers are going to kill you. He'd laugh it off. But John, if he did have the ability to be hearing us right now, would simply say one thing. I won't trade the experience for anything because the experience his last year and a half of his life was a fun one. Any weight that he would have gained, by the way, he didn't. He remained about 180 pounds the entire time. But the diet that he underwent certainly wasn't good for him. You also give away these, these burgers for free, if my understanding is correct, who pe to people who already weigh over a certain amount. So uh, you're, you're, you're incentivizing them even more to, to perhaps worsen their already existing problem. Is, do you, do you, isn't that true? If a, if a customer, or I call them patients, walk through the door and this patient is 400 pounds, do I either ban him from the door and say, no, sir, this isn't in your best interest, you should leave, or do I give him the burger with a smile on my face and pat him on the back and send him to his table. That's, but or, you, you do neither one of those things. Or, you, you give it for free. Exactly. I do. I've chosen a third route. And that is, yes, I'll give him his burger so I'm not slapped with a discrimination suit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him his burger along with a lesson. I serve burgers, I serve fries, and I serve food for thought. Sir, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of ways to get this message across. I just, I, I can't imagine that, that your way is going to work. I'm not saying I know the right way, but this, this just seems dangerous. Uh, as Mark Twain said, all things in moderation, including moderation. I don't preach moderation. That's a tired mantra. I tell people they have to turn it loose every once in a while. The only way you're going to take care of your health issues is to decide, hey, today is Thursday and it's my cheat day and I'm going to have a burger this big if I want to. All right, uh, John Basso, th thanks for joining us. An interesting point of view. Again, sure. I, I, thank I, you. you know, I'm, I'm not sure I completely agree. But well, my next guest says that Dunkin' Donuts is simply caving into the fat police. He's John Basso. He's the owner of something called the Heart Attack Grill. It's in Phoenix, where everything is cooked in lard, and they have no plans at all to cut trans fats. He is the author of the Heart Attack Grill Diet. So, John, you're not changing anything. Of course not. I feel that these companies have lost their integrity by changing their game plan in the middle of the stream to meet societal taste. 
Uh, the Heart Attack Grill has always done things deep fried in pure lard, and we always will. It's a matter of taste. Okay, now you're not a real doctor, are you? Well, Julius Irving settled that one back in the 70s, so let's just call me Dr. John. Okay, well, you're, the, you're not a doctor, okay, but and you have things like single bypass burgers that go all the way up to quadruple bypass burgers uh, that I, I, I guess could, could do a, a wonder on your arteries. Now, the critics are going to come after you and say, hey, in this day and age, not the good thing to do. You're saying what? I say live for the day. The Heart Attack Grill, like every restaurant should be, is a place to enjoy one's life. Eat to the fullest, have fun, and don't worry about what people are telling you. If you want a second opinion, I'll give you a second opinion. <laughs> so, you're, you know, there's going to be growing pressure in your community to do this. And, and uh, you know, it, it will begin with protests. It will continue ad nauseum, one after another saying, hey, this is not the politically correct thing to do. You're telling me you will never bend, you will never waver? I am an American citizen. My customers, or patients as I call them, are American citizens, and we will eat what we want to. But I have to note to you, sir, that the lard we use has less saturated fat, less calories than your average tab of butter. There's no trans fat in lard, which is what we've always used. The chain shifting from one synthetic option to another synthetic option simply to buck the trans fat is ludicrous. Why don't they just use a better form of fat like the Heart Attack Grill? Pure lard. It's right. taste worth dying for. Well, you, we are right this with respect, John, that it does change. Our, our preferences and worries change. We've both doubled in terms of money, in terms of square footage, but we've exponentially grown when you want to talk about extending the message.